Hi there. Welcome to another J Black Cult tutorial. In this tutorial, you are gonna learn how to prepare a character on Photoshop and how to export it to Moho. Once we have our character ready, we must separate each part in a different layer in Photoshop. Here we can create folders and layers. Then Moho will import it in an organized and automatic way, so do not worry about it. Once we have everything ready, we can save the file normally as a PSD. Then in Moho, we will have to create a new file. It's always recommended to prepare the video format at the beginning. To do this, we have to go to File, Project Settings, and from here we can adjust the height and width of our project. We can also determine the number of frames for our animation. But we can adjust that later. To import our Photoshop file we have to go to File, Import, General Import. We will look for our file, and then Moho will offer us three options. If we opt for the first option, which is, select layers. Moho will show us the layers separately, and it will give us the option to select the layers we want. The problem with this option is that Moho will import the character with all the layers separately. And that's not what we want. The second option is, composite. This option allows you to import the file, but it will bring the entire project in a single layer. And that won't work either. So yes, the third is our option. Choose, individually. Now we will have our complete character, and we will be able to see all the layers and folders as we have them in Photoshop. Remember that all the changes you make to the Photoshop PSD file will be reflected in Moho. Okay, so, Moho will automatically create a folder with all of our layers inside. In my case my folder will be called, Bull. If you want to modify the size of the character, you can do it simply by selecting the folder that contains all the layers, or, you can also modify the size of each layer individually if you want. To see a preview of your scene, you can do it from, File, Preview. You can also add a background to your scene. If you already have one, you can import it, and place it outside of your character's layers folder. In my case I will change only the background color. To change it, you have to go to, New Layer, then choose, Vector. If you already have an image, choose, Image. You can choose the color you want. Then go to, Draw Shape, to draw a background square. Change the name of your layers, so you can have everything organized, and delete all the layers that you will not use. To change the color of the background, go to, Color Points, and from here you can open the color palette, and choose the color you want. Now let's start creating the bones. Creating the bones is very easy in Moho. First, we have to choose the folder that contains all the parts of our character, and then click on, Convert to Bones. We will see that the folder icon has now turned into a small bone, and we will also see that in our toolbar, on the left, we will have new options to create the bone structure. To create the bones, click on, add bone, and simply click and drag the mouse to draw them. Generally I start by drawing the torso bones first, and then I add the arms and legs. I'm going to draw two bones for the torso, and one for the head. In some cases it is not necessary, but in this character I am going to add two bones for the hips, and then the legs. You can practice and test different bone structures. Using the option, Manipulate Bones, you can adjust the length of each bone. I'm going to add two bones as shoulders, and then I will add the bones for each arm. I will also add some bones to the feathers, these bones will work as, dynamic bones. These types of bones are generally used for clothing, hair, ropes, or anything that is not fixed to our character. We will see that in a minute. Okay, our bones are ready. The zero frame of our timeline will always be the frame from where we can modify our character. So, to do a test and see how our bones work, we must position the timeline in frame 1. Then click on, Manipulate Bones, and try moving some of the bones. We can see that the character is already attached to the bones. But they look really bad. 
Look, even in some cases there are bones that are separated from the rest. Okay, let's go back to frame 0 and fix this. Click on, Reparenting Bones. This can be confusing, but is not that hard. If you look closely, there are arrows that goes from bones to bones. It is important to keep the arrows organized cause the bones are gonna be working in a chain-like manner. If there is a missing link, it will break the whole figure. To fix this, we must select each bone, and then click on the Reparenting tool, or by clicking on the shortcut P, and then we have to click on the next bone to create the chain. Let's look at the right arm. To test it, we have to go to frame 1 and move it. As we can see, this chain of bones is still moving the rest of the character. To separate the arm from the rest, we must select the arm bones, then select the arm layer, and then click on Ctrl, Shift, F. Now this arm will be affected only by those bones. Let's try the movement. As we can see, the bones of the arm now work correctly. Each bone has a bone strength. This will limit the strength of each bone, and this can be adjusted at any time. To reduce it, we select all the bones with the selection tool, then click on, Bone Strength, and then click on one of the bones and drag to reduce its strength. Let's continue adjusting the arrows to keep the chain of bones organized. Remember that you must first select the bone and then, you must link it with the next one. If you wish to have an unlinked bone, you can simply select it, click S, and click outside the character. It is important to have a main root bone. Or parent bone. In this case, I'm going to direct all the bones to my character's chest bone first. Then we will create the root bone. In the case of the feathers, I'm going to link them with the closest bone. Now that we have the chain organized, we will be able to select each bone and link it with each part of the body. So, select the bones, then the corresponding layer and click, Ctrl, Shift, F. Let's start with the head. Select the head bone, then the head layer, and click, Ctrl, Shift, F. Now, let's go with the body. Select all the bones, then the body layer, and click, Ctrl, Shift, F. Repeat this process for the legs and for the left arm that will be attached to the weapon. Let's do a test. Let's go to frame 1, and move our character. Try every bone to see if it moves as it should. The head is not moving, that is usually a parenting problem. I relinked the head bone to the character's chest, and the chain is now fixed. Now let's work on the dynamic bones of the feathers. Creating dynamic bones is very simple. We just have to select them, then click on, Bone Constraints, and then we will select, Bone Dynamic. I'm going to leave the parameters at 2, 2, 1. Let's make a little animation to test the dynamic bones. You can always change the parameters to adjust the range of motion. We already have our character created. Now, we are going to create a parent bone to control the entire figure. This will help to limit the movement on both feet. By doing this, we will be able to move the legs more easily, and make the character walk if we want. Okay, to do this, first, we need to create a new bone. Then we click on the main bone of our character, and we will link it to the new bone. Let's try it. As we can see, now we have the new bone controlling the entire character. Press S and reduce the bone strength to zero. Now, let's create two new bones in the back of the feet.
Press S and reduce the bone strength to zero. Now, let's name it. To do this, we just have to select them, and we will see that it already has a default name. Let's change that. I am gonna call this one right leg. And I am gonna call the other one left leg. These two bones do not need to be linked to other bones by the arrows. What we have to do is, select the leg bone in this case, then click on, Bone Constraints, come down to Target, and choose, Right Leg from the list. When you do this, you will see that a circle appears in the middle of these two bones, indicating that there is now a target. We repeat the same process with the other leg. We can now choose the main bone and move it. We will see that the feet are now fixed to the ground. So, let's create a little animation to see how our character comes to life. So that is a little bit about target bones inside Moho. In this case we have created an animation from a character created in Photoshop. In another video we will create a character drawn completely in Moho, and we will try different expressions, such as the ones I did for the example of Gravity Falls character, Dipper Pines. I will leave the link in the description. With that said, now it's time to practice. Please leave comments if you want to see more tutorials and subscribe to see other videos. I'll be uploading something about ZBrush soon and more about Moho and drawing videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.